Putin wants more and more of Ukraine, not scaling back, scaling up. And this comes as Ukrainian forces are pushing back Russian forces in a crucial village in southern Ukraine, a place that frankly has been under Russian control for weeks. Nick Peyton Walsh is out front on the ground with more. Racing under the tree line, changing their path every time, with Russian troops often just metres away. This is the fight for Ukraine's most important riverbank, and this is the place where Moscow's brutal advance has been stopped. Osakorovka was held by Russian troops for weeks, but now the Russians shell where they once hid and probe the outskirts daily. Vladimir and his men have been alert since 4am, fearing a Russian attack and more of the cluster bombs they say tore down this tree. So they're about two kilometres away in that direction, he says. And... So occasionally they get what Russians call diversionary groups, which are kind of scouting groups to try and probe their defences, but so far he says they've been successful fighting them. Fresh flowers laid at the monument to the last war's dead, but broken glass here where this war's living shelter. Faces that seem beyond caring who is in control. And dust that makes you wonder who will come back if it ever gets normal again. In these endless idyllic villages, it bends belief to see the quiet life forced underground like this. He's saying that the, uh, the rocket landed during lunchtime and there was nobody in there. 40, 50 people have been at one point. You'll see the rooms they're living in. But it is not an easy job taking back these villages. Loyalties have evaporated in some cases. The troops say they found traitors here, but lack evidence to prosecute, citing one case. There's a guy on the phone here. A guy on the phone. And now, a local on the phone is reason for suspicion. Russian troops came to one man's home, he says, and offered to make him a local leader. It's not at all simple. He was the local mayor for them. That's why they never touched him. And there's also a former Russian colonel living here. They say they have reason to know they're being watched. I'll only say that when we first came here, he says, it was in the morning when there was a fog and it was impossible to see us, but the Russians shot at us, which means someone gave us up. As we emerge, a puff of smoke in the sky, an explosive or a flare. Two blasts, leading them to think the cluster bombs may follow again. Vladimir stays in place. The back and forth persists for places that cease to exist in the fight for them. And Nick joins me now from Kharkiv, another city where Ukrainian forces appear to be making gains. I mean, Nick, it's incredible to watch that footage and, and you know, just to see what you're, you're, you're watching. For now, Russian forces uh, seem to be moving back in some places. What do we know about the reasons why? Yeah, it's unclear exactly why Ukrainian forces are having, it seems, such success around where I'm standing here in Kharkiv. You can hear a distant rumble of artillery over there, and that's also where they say, and evidence points to how they've reclaimed a number of villages literally 10 sometimes five miles away from where I'm standing. And there's appear to have been minimal Russian resistance to that. And there've been reports that we can't confirm that they've rushed 500 troops from separatist areas up to here to bolster their defenses. Right. So a lot moving here around Haki, which had originally, they thought, potentially been one of their easiest targets when the war first began. But you see there in the South, how little progress they're making. And this had all been originally part of their reset for the new offense those strikes in Odessa possibly an expression of frustration because on the ground Russia has been making very little progress at all if not moving backwards. Erin?